According to the Hebrew Bible, Solomon's temple, also known as the First Temple, was the Holy Temple Hebrew, Beit Hamikdash in ancient Jerusalem before its destruction by Nebuchadnezzar II after the siege of Jerusalem of 587 BCE and its subsequent replacement with the Second Temple in the 6th century BCE. The Hebrew Bible states that the temple was constructed under Solomon, king of the United Kingdom of Israel and Judah and that during the Kingdom of Judah, the temple was dedicated to Yahweh, and is said to have housed the Ark of the Covenant. Jewish historian Josephus says that, "...the temple was burned 470 years, six months, and ten days after it was built." Because of the religious sensitivities involved, and the politically volatile situation in Jerusalem, only limited archaeological surveys of the Temple Mount have been conducted. No archaeological excavations have been allowed on the Temple Mount during modern times. Therefore, there are very few pieces of archaeological evidence for the existence of Solomon's Temple. An ivory pomegranate which mentions priests in the house of H and an inscription recording the temple's restoration under Jehoash have both appeared on the antiquities market, but their authenticity has been challenged and they are the subject of controversy. In the Tanakh The only source of information on the first temple is the Tanakh. According to the biblical sources, the temple was constructed under Solomon, during the united monarchy of Israel and Judah. The Bible describes Hiram I of Tyre who furnished architects, workmen and cedar timbers for the temple of his ally Solomon at Jerusalem. He also cooperated with Solomon in mounting an expedition on the Red Sea. 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 1 puts the date of the beginning of building the temple. In the 4th year of Solomon's reign over Israel. The conventional dates of Solomon's reign are circa 970 to 931 BCE. This puts the date of its construction in the mid-10th century BCE. Schmid and Ruprecht are of the view that the site of the temple used to be a Jebusite shrine which Solomon chose in an attempt to unify the Jebusites and Israelites. 1 Kings 9 verse 10 says that it took Solomon 20 years altogether to build the temple and his royal palace. The temple itself finished being built after seven years. During the United Monarchy the temple was dedicated to Yahweh, the God of Israel, and housed the Ark of the Covenant. Rabbinic sources state that the first temple stood for 410 years and, based on the second-century work Seder Olam Rabbah, place construction in 832 BCE and destruction in 422 BCE 3338 AM, 165 years later than secular estimates, the exact location of the temple is unknown, it is believed to have been situated upon the hill which forms the site of the first-century second temple and present-day Temple Mount, where the Dome of the Rock is situated, according to the Tanakh, the temple was plundered by the Neo-Babylonian Empire King Nebuchadnezzar II when the Babylonians attacked Jerusalem during the brief reign of Jehoiakim c. 598 BCE 2 Kings 24 verse 13. A decade later, Nebuchadnezzar again besieged Jerusalem and after 30 months finally breached the city walls in 587 BCE, subsequently burning the temple, along with most of the city 2 Kings 25. According to Jewish tradition, the temple was destroyed on Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of Avenue Hebrew calendar. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Architectural description. The Temple of Solomon is considered to be built according to Phoenician design, and its description is considered the best description of what a Phoenician temple looked like. The detailed descriptions provided in the Tanakh are the sources for reconstructions of its appearance. Technical details are lacking, since the scribes who wrote the books were not architects or engineers. Nevertheless, the descriptions have inspired modern replicas of the temple and influenced later structures around the world. Reconstructions differ. The following is largely based on Easton's Bible Dictionary and the Jewish Encyclopedia. Topic. Holy of Holies The Holy of Holies, or Kadesh HaKodeshim in Hebrew, 1 Kings 6 verse 19, 8-6, also called the Inner House, 627, Heb. 9-3 was 20 cubits in length, breadth, and height. The usual explanation for the discrepancy between its height and the 30-cubit height of the temple is that its floor was elevated, like the cella of other ancient temples. 
It was floored and wainscoted with cedar of Lebanon, 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 16, and its walls and floor were overlaid with gold, 620, 21, 30, amounting to 600 talents, 2 chr, 3 to 8, or roughly 20 metric tons. It contained two cherubim of olive wood, each 10 cubits high, 1 Kings chapter 6 verses 16, 20, 21, 23 to 28, and each having outspread wings of 10 cubits span, so that since they stood side by side, the wings touched the wall on either side and met in the center of the room. There was a two-leaved door between it and the holy place overlaid with gold, 2 chr, 422, also a veil of teclet, blue, purple, and crimson and fine linen, 2 Chronicles chapter 3 verse 14, compare Exodus chapter 26 verse 33. It had no windows, 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 12, and was considered the dwelling place of the name of God. The Kadesh HaKodeshim the Holy of Holies was prepared to receive and house the Ark 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 19, and when the temple was dedicated, the Ark, containing the original tablets of the Ten Commandments, was placed beneath the cherubim 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 6. <laughs> Hekel The Hekel, or Holy Place, 1 Kings chapter 8 verses 8 to 10, is also called the Greater House. 2 chr, 3 to 5, and the temple. 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 17, the word also means palace, was of the same width and height as the Holy of Holies, but 40 cubits in length. Its walls were lined with cedar, on which were carved figures of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, which were overlaid with gold. Chains of gold further marked it off from the Holy of Holies. The floor of the temple was of fir wood overlaid with gold. The door posts, of olive wood, supported folding doors of fir. The doors of the Holy of Holies were of olive wood. On both sets of doors were carved cherubim, palm trees, and flowers, all being overlaid with gold 1 Kings 6 verse 15 at Seq. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The noun hekel Hebrew, heikel borrowed from Sumerian, a, gal, big house, means, a large building. This can be either the main building of the temple in Jerusalem, that is the nave, or sanctuary, of the temple, or a palace such as the, palace, of Ahab, king of Samaria, or the, palace, of the king of Babylon. Hekel is used 80 times in the Masoretic text of the Hebrew Bible. Of these, 70 refer to the house of the Lord in Hebrew Bible Bayit Yehwah Beit Yahweh, the other 10 are references to palaces. There is no reference to any part of the tabernacle using this term in the Hebrew Bible. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the Hekel sanctuary. Topic. Use in architecture in older English versions of the Bible, including the King James Version, the term temple is used to translate heckel. In modern versions more reflective of archaeological research, the distinction is made of different sections of the whole temple. Scholars and archaeologists generally agree on the structure of Solomon's temple as described in 1 Kings 6 verses 3-5, with the main building, the heckel, in English now sometimes called the sanctuary. The Devere, the Inner Sanctuary, and finally the Holy of Holies, this main building was between the outer altar, where most sacrifices were performed, and inside at the far end was the entry to the Holy of Holies, originally containing the Ark of the Covenant. The main heckel contained a number of sacred ritual objects including the seven-branched candlestick, the inner altar for incense offerings also called the Golden Altar, and the table of the showbread. The same architectural layout of the temple was adopted in synagogues leading to the heckel being applied in Sephardi usage to the Ashkenazi Torah Ark, the equivalent of the nave. Topic. Porch The ulam, or porch, acted as an entrance before the temple on the east 1 Kings 6 verse 3, 2chr, 3-4, 9-7. This was 20 cubits long, corresponding to the width of the temple, and 10 cubits deep. 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 3, ESV 2 chr 3 to 4 notes that this porch was 120 cubits high. The description does not specify whether a wall separated it from the next chamber. In the porch stood the two pillars Jachin and Boaz. 1 Kings chapter 7 verse 21, 2 Kings chapter 11 verse 14, 23 to 3, which were 18 cubits in height. 
Topic: <laughs> Chambers. Chambers were built around the temple on the southern, western and northern sides. 1 Kings chapter 6 verses 5 to 10. These formed a part of the building and were used for storage. They were probably one story high at first, two more may have been added later. Topic. Courts According to the Bible, two courts surrounded the temple. The inner court 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 36, or court of the priests 2 CHR, 4 to 9, was separated from the space beyond by a wall of three courses of hewn stone, surmounted by cedar beams 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 36. It contained the altar of burnt offering 2 CHR, 15 to 8, the brazen sea laver 4 to 2 minus 5, 10, and 10 other lavers 1 Kings chapter 7 verses 38, 39. A brazen altar stood before the temple 2 Kings chapter 16 verse 14, its dimensions 20 cubits square and 10 cubits high 2 CHR, 4 to 1. The great court surrounded the whole temple 2 CHR, 4 to 9. It was here that people assembled to worship. Jeremiah chapter 19 verse 14, 26 to 2. Topic: <inaudible> Molten Sea. According to the Hebrew Bible, the Molten Sea or Brazen Sea, Imu, cast metal sea, was a large basin in the temple for ablution of the priests. It is described in 1 Kings chapter 7 verses 23 to 26 and 2 Chronicles chapter 4 verses 2 to 5. It stood in the southeastern corner of the inner court. According to the Bible, it was 5 cubits high, 10 cubits in diameter from brim to brim, and 30 cubits in circumference. The brim was like the calyx of a lily, and turned outward, about an hand breadth, or about four inches. It was placed on the backs of twelve oxen, standing with their faces outward. The Book of Kings states that it contains two thousand baths, ninety cubic meters, while Chronicles two chr four to five minus six states it can hold up to three thousand baths, one hundred thirty-six cubic meters, and states that its purpose was to afford opportunity for the purification by immersion of the bodies of the priests. The fact that it was a wash basin which was too large to enter from above lends to the idea that water would likely have flowed from it down into a subcontainer beneath. The water was originally supplied by the Gibbonites, but was afterwards brought by a conduit from Solomon's pools. The molten sea was made of brass or bronze, which Solomon had taken from the captured cities of Hadarezer, the king of Zobah 1 Chronicles 18 verse 8. Ahaz later removed this lava from the oxen, and placed it on a stone pavement 2 Kings 16 verse 17. It was destroyed by the Chaldeans 2 Kings 25 verse 13. The lavas, each of which held 40 baths, 1 Kings 7 verse 38, rested on portable holders made of bronze, provided with wheels, and ornamented with figures of lions, cherubim, and palm trees. The author of the Books of the Kings describes their minute details with great interest 1 Kings chapter 7 verses 27 to 37. Josephus reported that the vessels in the temple were composed of orichalcum in antiquities of the Jews. According to 1 Kings chapter 7 verse 48 there stood before the Holy of Holies a golden altar of incense and a table for showbread. This table was of gold, as were also the five candlesticks on each side of it. The implements for the care of the candles tongs, basins, snuffers, and fire pans were of gold, and so were the hinges of the doors. Topic. Dedication 1 Kings chapter 8 verses 10-66 and 2 Chronicles chapter 6 verses 1-42 recount the events of the temple's dedication. When the priests emerged from the Holy of Holies after placing the Ark there, the temple was filled with an overpowering cloud which interrupted the dedication ceremony. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. 1 Kings chapter 8 verses 10 to 11, 2 Chronicles chapter 5 verses 13, 14. Solomon interpreted the cloud as proof that his pious work was accepted. The Lord has said that he would dwell in thick darkness. I have built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell in forever. 1 Kings chapter 8 verses 12 to 13. The allusion is to Leviticus chapter 16 verse 2. The Lord said to Moses, 
Tell your brother Aaron not to come just at any time into the sanctuary inside the curtain before the mercy seat that is upon the ark, or he will die, for I appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Solomon then led the whole assembly of Israel in prayer, noting that the construction on the temple represented a fulfillment of God's promise to David, dedicating the temple as a place of prayer and reconciliation for the people of Israel and for foreigners living in Israel, and highlighting the paradox that God who lives in the heavens cannot really be contained within a single building. The dedication was concluded with sacrifices said to have included 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep. Topic: <laughs> Archaeology. Because of the religious and political sensitivities involved, no archaeological excavations and only limited surface surveys of the Temple Mount have been conducted since Charles Warren's expedition of 1867 to 70. There is no archaeological evidence for the existence of Solomon's Temple, and the building is not mentioned in surviving extra-biblical accounts. Israel Finkelstein and Neil Asher Silberman argue that the first Jewish temple in Jerusalem was not built until the end of the 7th century BCE, around 300 years after Solomon. They believe the temple should not really be assigned to Solomon, who they see as little more than a small-time hill country chieftain, and argue that it was most likely built by Josiah, who governed Judah from 639 to 609 BCE. An ostracon excavated prior to 1981, sometimes referred to as the House of Yahweh Ostracon, was discovered at Tel Arad, dated to 6th century BCE which mentions a temple which is probably the temple in Jerusalem. A thumb-sized ivory pomegranate which came to light in 1979 measuring 44 mm in, in height, and bearing an ancient Hebrew inscription, "...sacred donation for the priests in the house of, H." was believed to have adorned a scepter used by the high priest in Solomon's temple. It was considered the most important item of biblical antiquities in the Israel Museum's collection. However, in 2004, the Israel Antiquities Authority reported the inscription to be a forgery, though the ivory pomegranate itself was dated to the 14th or 13th century BCE. This was based on the report's claim that three incised letters in the inscription stopped short of an ancient break, as they would have if carved after the ancient break was made. Since then, it has been proven that one of the letters was indeed carved prior to the ancient break, and the status of the other two letters are in question. Some paleographers and others have continued to insist that the inscription is ancient, some dispute this so the authenticity of this writing is still the object of discussion. Another artifact, the Jehoash inscription, which first came to notice in 2003, contains a 15-line description of King Jehoash's 9th century BCE restoration of the temple. Its authenticity was called into question by a report by the Israel Antiquities Authority, which said that the surface patina contained microfossils of foraminifera. As these fossils do not dissolve in water, they cannot occur in a calcium carbonate patina, leading initial investigators to conclude that the patina must be an artificial chemical mix applied to the stone by forgers. As of late 2012, the academic community is split on whether the tablet is authentic or not. Commenting on a 2012 report by geologists arguing for the authenticity of the inscription, in October 2012, Herschel Shanks who believes the inscription is genuine wrote the current situation was that most Hebrew language scholars believe that the inscription is a forgery and geologists that it is genuine, and thus, "...because we rely on experts, and because there is an apparently irresolvable conflict of experts in this case, Barr has taken no position with respect to the authenticity of the Jehoash inscription." By 2006, the Temple Mount Sifting Project had recovered numerous artifacts dating from the 8th to 7th centuries BCE from soil removed in 1999 by the Islamic Religious Trust from the Solomon Stables area of the Temple Mount. These include stone weights for weighing silver and a first temple period bulla, or seal impression, containing ancient Hebrew writing which includes the name Netanyahu ben Yash. Netanyahu is a name mentioned several times in the book of Jeremiah while the name Yash appears in the Lachish letters. However, the combination of names was unknown to scholars. In 2007, artifacts dating to the 8th to 6th centuries BCE were described as being possibly the first physical evidence of human activity at the Temple Mount during the First Temple period. The findings included animal bones, ceramic bowl rims, bases, and body sherds, the base of a juglet used to pour oil, the handle of a small juglet, and the rim of a storage jar. In November 2018, a Becca 
Coin from the First Temple period was found by a volunteer in the city of David's wet sifting project. Other contemporary temples There is archaeological and written evidence of three Israelite temples, either contemporary or a very close date, dedicated to Yahweh Elephantine Temple, probably Arad II, either in the land of Israel or in Egypt. Two of them have the same general outline as given by the Bible for the Jerusalem Temple. The Israelite Temple at Tel Arad in Judah, 10th to 8th, 7th century BCE and possibly dedicated to Yahweh and Asherah. The Jewish Temple at Elephantine in Egypt, already standing in 525 BCE. The Israelite Temple at Tel Matzah, c. 750 BCE discovered in 2012 a few kilometers west of Jerusalem. Several Iron Age temples have been found in the region that have striking similarities to the Temple of King Solomon. In particular the Ain Dara archaeological site, Ain Dara Temple in northern Syria with a similar age, size, plan and decorations. <laughs> Freemasonry Rituals in Freemasonry refer to King Solomon and the building of his temple. Masonic buildings, where lodge members meet, are sometimes called temples, an allegoric reference to King Solomon's temple. <inaudible> Kabbalah Kabbalah views the design of the Temple of Solomon as representative of the metaphysical world and the descending light of the Creator through Sephirot of the Tree of Life. The levels of the outer, inner and priest's courts represent three lower worlds of Kabbalah. The Boaz and Jachin pillars at the entrance of the temple represent the active and passive elements of the world of Atzilith. The original menorah and its seven branches represent the seven lower sephirot of the Tree of Life. The veil of the Holy of Holies and the inner part of the temple represent the veil of the abyss on the Tree of Life, behind which the Shahina or Divine Presence hovers. <laughs> Islam The temple in Jerusalem is mentioned in verse 7 of the Surah al-Isra in the Quran. Commentators of Quran such as Muhammad al-Tahir ibn Asher postulate that this verse refers specifically to the Temple of Solomon. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Popular culture. Solomon's Temple appears in Solomon and Sheba 1959 and in the novel King Solomon's Mines 1885. It also appears in the video game Assassin's Creed where the main character Altair ibn Lahad deal with Robert de Sable. It appears too on Assassin's Creed Unity 2014 where the Knight Templar Jacques de Molay is burned and died. See also Footnotes References DeVoe, Roland John McHugh, ed. Ancient Israel, Its Life and Institutions. N.Y., McGraw-Hill. Draper, Robert Kings of Controversy. National Geographic, 66–91. ISSN 0027-9358. Retrieved 18 December 2010. Finkelstein, Israel, Neil Asher Silberman David and Solomon, In Search of the Bible's Sacred Kings and the Roots of the Western Tradition. Free Press. ISBN 0-7432-4362-5. Finkelstein, Israel, Neil Asher Silberman. The Bible Unearthed, Archaeology's New Vision. Gluck, Nelson, February 1944. On the Trail of King Solomon's Mines. National Geographic. 85 233-56. ISSN 0027-9358. Goldman, Bernard The Sacred Portal, a Primary Symbol in Ancient Judaic Art. Detroit, Wayne State University Press. It has a detailed account and treatment of Solomon's Temple and its significance. Hamblin, William, David Seeley Solomon's Temple, Myth and History. Thames and Hudson. ISBN 0 500 25133 9. Mazar, Benjamin. The Mountain of the Lord. N.Y., Doubleday. 
ISBN 0-385-04843-2. Young, Mike. Temple Measurements and Photo Recreations. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Easton, Matthew George 1897. Temple, Solomons. Easton's Bible Dictionary New and Revised Ed. T. Nelson and Sons. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Singer, Isidore, et al., eds., 1901-1906. Temple of Solomon. Jewish Encyclopedia. New York, Funk and Wagnalls Company. Topic further reading 21st Century Resources Barker, Margaret 2004, Temple Theology, An Introduction, London, The Society for Promoting Christian Knowledge, ISBN 0281056346X. Vaughan, Andrew G., Killebrew, Anne E., eds., 2003, Jerusalem in Bible and Archaeology, The First Temple Period, Society of Biblical Literature. Stevens, Marty E. 2006, Temples, Tithes, and Taxes, The Temple and the Economic Life of Ancient Israel, Hendrickson Publishers, ISBN 1-56563-934-0. Dever, William G. The 10th of May 2001, What Did the Biblical Writers Know and When Did They Know It? W. M. B. Eerdmans, Jones, Floyd Nolan The Chronology of the Old Testament, New Leaf Publishing Group, Post 1945 Resource Elizabeth Block Smith, Who is the King of Glory? Solomon's Temple and Its Symbolism in Michael D. Coogan, J. Cheryl Exum, Lawrence E. Stager eds, Scripture and Other Artifacts, Essays in Honor of Philip J. King Westminster John Knox, 1994 Gershon Galil, The Chronology of the Kings of Israel and Judah, Brill, 1996 Joseph Blenkinsop, Sage, Priest, Prophet, Religious and Intellectual Leadership in Ancient Israel Westminster John Knox Press, 1995 Jeremy Hughes, Secrets of the Times, Myth and History in Biblical Chronology Sheffield Academic Press, 1990 Edwin R. Tila, The Mysterious Numbers of the Hebrew Kings Zondervan, 1983 Watson E. Mills, Roger Aubrey Bullard eds, Mercer Dictionary of the Bible Mercer University Press, 1990 pre 945 Resource Spain, T.O. 1870. Solomon's Temple, including the Tabernacle, First Temple, House of the King, or House of the Forest of Lebanon, Idolatrous High Places, the City on the Mountain, the Oblation of the Holy Portion, and the Last Temple. Boston, H. H. and T. W. Carter <laughs> External links Media related to Temple of Solomon at Wikimedia Commons